This is Autism Points of View by Autism Speaks. I'm Felipe Maya. In this special episode, we'll talk about some exciting changes at Autism Speaks we want you to know about. If you're listening to this, you've probably already noticed our new, more colorful Autism Points of View thumbnail image. Autism Speaks was founded 15 years ago, and to mark that anniversary and to better reflect our evolved understanding of autism and our deepened commitment to inclusivity, we've brought the diversity of the autism spectrum to our logo through color. And you'll notice this new spectrum of brilliant colors everywhere we are, from our website, social media, PSAs, and more. Here's Autism Speaks president and CEO, Angela Geiger. I think one of the most important things about Autism Speaks as we celebrate our 15th anniversary is that we've evolved as the community has evolved. And whether that was four years ago when we changed our mission statement and created a vision for our next 10 years, but really, listening and learning from people with autism and families and researchers. And I think that's why this um, logo refresh was so important because everybody knows the iconic blue puzzle piece, uh, but it was very singular. And this new brand truly keeps the legacy of what was so important about Autism Speaks, putting that stake in the ground of making sure that autism was an issue that people cared about, but it's now evolved to really reflect the diversity of the spectrum and also the lifespan. We talked to some families in the autism community to ask what has changed for them over the last 15 years. I think the changes from the beginning of our journey with autism, um, almost indescribable, because you start out from a place where there's no um, no knowledge by the people surrounding you. So you have to become the educator, and that also means you have to know everything already. This is Susan Murray, mom to Owen, who is 26 years old and was diagnosed at 18 months. We had someone come from early intervention to our house to do a diagnosis, and I was definitely not prepared for what I was going to be told. Um, He asked me if I knew what autism was. And I wasn't sure still because back then you really didn't hear about it that often. And the main frame of reference I think back then was really the movie Rayman. That's how everybody knew what you were talking about. Huge change um, with having Autism Speaks in our world that is now encompassed by autism. Um, Basically, it was just a complete game changer because, you know, we had a roadmap after that and everybody's path is different, but they gave everybody an individualized roadmap. You have toolkits for all, all kinds of different issues that or, you know, you can download them on the website and anyone, no matter if you live in New York or you live in Topeka, Kansas or wherever, you're, you have access to all of that amazing information and that information came from experts, clinicians and doctors. And if I had a son now today with autism, my experience would be 100% different with him now or if I had a daughter now. So now I would have information. Now I would have an automatic inst- instant huge support group whether it be locally and also glo- globally really i mean there's it's almost like you're part of a family now and that's makes all the difference in the world carmen sanchez says when her 15 year old son jacob was first diagnosed at age three she didn't know what to do next to support him no one that i knew had a child with autism so this was so new to my whole family um, and so I relied a lot on some friends who knew of a friend who had tried something and that's how we started the process of getting him evaluated. Um, and back then it was even unheard of, like they didn't have doctors that were specifically designed for autism. And so it was really hard to 
find someone to help us, um, I found Autism Speaks. Um, and that's where we found so many of the very first services for him. Larry Lynn talks about what was going through his mind after receiving an autism diagnosis for his 11-year-old daughter, Bridget, when she was three. Uh, it was a lot of confusion. Um, we heard about uh, autism before, but uh, when it actually happened to us, then it's very personal. And we didn't know exactly what would happen to Bridget because either she would become closer, uh, more mainstream, or maybe she would require a lot of medical care for the rest of her life. So back then, we didn't know much of anything. I definitely went to internet, so we searched for the words autism, um, a development delay, and other things. But by now, there are a lot more resources on the internet. Um, it's easier for us to find very credible sources and very influential organizations like Autism Speaks. Uh, we know there is the 100-day uh, resource kit. So for us, we started with that and then also shared with um, other families and also with the school and other Chinese parents about this resource. Uh, and then also always getting uh, the policy um, uh, guidance there um, because when we lived in different states, uh, they didn't have some of the important therapies covered. So we know that uh, organizations like Autism Speaks continue to help different states to put those uh, benefits into place. Sophie, who is 22 years old and on the spectrum, looks back at some of the difficulties she had speaking when she was younger. When I was little, I was nonverbal and I had a difficult time communicating with people and, you know, and interacting with other kids. And that was really hard for me. And then a miraculous uh, moment happened in my life uh, when I was little. I was in the car with my mom and I was probably either driving back from school or going home from somewhere and my mom would play the Disney Princess movie soundtrack CD in the car like a thousand times for me because that would uh, keep me occupied. And then um, one of the songs from the CD uh, popped up and I'm sitting in the car and I start singing. I start singing and I'm singing and singing and my mom is driving in the car and she's bawling her eyes out and she's like, uh, she's like, oh my God, she can finally, you know, finally speak and she can finally, you know, communicate with people and she can finally, you know, find her, find, you know, her voice now. Besides the new, more colorful Autism Speaks, you might have also noticed another change. Our name is now written in lowercase. It was just a more welcoming typeface. You know, it's sometimes this is as simple as what looks good to people. <laughs> and to be quite honest, that's what part of this was. It was really creating a look that made people want to lean in and be part of Autism Speaks. And then when we actually started thinking about how this was actually a look and feel, we tested it with people and we had people in the community look at it and give us feedback. And one of the things that uh, was really uh, great was that when people just looked at it, they were able to articulate exactly what it was we were trying to do with the change. We got to give some of the people you've heard from in this episode a sneak peek at the new Autism Speaks. Here are some of their reactions. Oh my God. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh my God. This is so nice. I really like the rainbow uh, pu puzzle piece. It's really, it's really cool. Here's Carmen Sanchez's son, Jacob. Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three. Ooh. Oh, wow. I love it. Ooh, it got the it got the nice color too. It's like a rainbow. Look at that. that it got the blue. You can still remember. Actually, there there's not just blue. There's like a yellowish, orangish. Oh, I color. love it. It's I so actually pretty. I like it. So it's just a it's an improvement. It's all inclusive, all encompassing. <gasps> That's amazing. I love it. Oh, you like it? Yes. Yes. I love it. It's really great. I love it. 
pink and yellow. Yeah. That was Susan Murray and her son, Owen. Here's what Owen's dad, Kevin, had to say. I think that Autism Speaks was to give a voice not just to those who didn't speak, but to those communities that, that needed a voice. The logo, it, it very, it's reminiscent of the old puzzle band uh, that we all first were uh, exposed to. Um, and now, so it's an improved version. And, I, and it's more reflective of you know, where we're going, not where we were. To deepen our commitment to inclusivity in 2020, Autism Speaks isn't just changing its look. It's also taking action. We'd like our 15th year to be the year of kindness. And we're going to be celebrating acts of kindness throughout the year, both for in the general population, but also with people with autism. And we just think the world needs a little more of that. So I think the, the other thing we just wish that all of you join us for this anniversary is to create a kinder world and do that in your daily life, however that is meaningful to you. Autism Speaks Kindness Campaign will be counting acts of kindness, big and small, with the goal of hitting one million kindness acts to create a kinder world for autistic people. I'm going to leave you with Sophie's great advice for the autism community. Just go for, just go for, for your dreams and, and don't, don't let anybody stop you from, you know, from achieving your dreams and your goals. Well said, Sophie. Thank you for listening to this episode of Autism Points of View. To learn more about the Kindness Campaign, visit autismspeaks.org slash kindness. To learn more about our podcast and listen to past episodes, visit autismspeaks.org slash podcast. And don't forget to subscribe or follow Autism Points of View wherever you listen to podcasts to get new episodes as soon as they're available. This episode was written and produced by me and edited by Dax Schaefer with transcription by Valerie Tercios. I'm Felipe Maya. Thanks for listening.